good morning to you all and uh, welcome back. Um, today uh, I'm going to be attempting to photograph some red kites. Uh, I've come to a place called Aston Rowan uh, Nature Reserve where I've been before and had quite a bit of success. Um, it's um, one of the uh, three original places where red kites, I believe, were reintroduced into the UK. Um, that's around, well, around here anyway, Stoke and Church, Marlow area. Um, a place in Wales and I believe um, a place in Scotland, possibly Dumfries and Galloway area though, I'm not, not too clued up. Um, I've had some fantastic shots here before. Um, by chance, uh, work has taken me this way uh, on, a, on a paid photography job, not wildlife. Um, I do some, uh, some photography as a bit of a side hustle, though, albeit not, um, not wildlife photography. But as I was in the area, I thought, you know, I'll pop by um, and uh, see what I can get. Um, plan is to stay here for a few hours. Um, and, and see what's about really. Um, so as I walk um, towards where I'm photographing the kites, I thought I'd talk a bit more about the area. So um, it's quite busy here at the moment, um, but there is still a chance of seeing some deer, roe deer. I've some, I have seen roe deer here before. Um, although at this time of the day, probably a little bit less likely. Likewise, mudjack deer I've seen here before. Again, probably not likely today due to uh, time of day. Right. For five minutes, I'm already knackered. I went the wrong way and had to walk back up the hill with a heavy backpack on. That's really uh, taking out my breath. Um, so yeah, one of the um, good places, well, sorry, one of the good things about this place is because it's so high, you can get uh, some different angles on red kites, um, which make for more interesting shots than just the usual uh, birds in the sky. There's also a very high concentration of kites here and uh, as a result um, of the high concentration and the fact that this place is actually quite um, quite busy. You do get a lot of people here. The kites have become, I would say, more used to people. Um, so where I live in Swindon, um, all around the Marlborough Downs, the Ridgeway, around the Oxfordshire Ridgeway um, and into the Cotswolds, um, there's no shortage of red kites and I can photograph them all day long without um, having to go very far. In fact, I could even look out of my um, window in my, in my flat in Swindon and see them circling over the uh, centre of Swindon. Um, however, they're not quite as accustomed to people as they are here. So they're not tame by any means here, um, but they are, I guess, um, their, their circle of fear, if you like, uh, to quote uh, Tom Mason. Um, is more. Uh, it's not. It's not as. It's not as uh, extreme as uh, as other places. And here we have a little uh, little board, giving you some facts. Um, so yeah, it says here a total of 93 birds, mainly from Spain, were introduced near Aston Rowan between 1989 and 1994. Um, obviously, they've spanned and. Uh, expanded throughout the rest of the UK pretty much. Um, I think pretty much all counties now have them. Um, what a success story, really. I'm not sure I know of a, of a better reintroduction success story than the Red Kites, uh, actually. But um, yeah, uh, it's fantastic to see them. I certainly remember, well, just as recently as, as you know, the last 25 years in my lifetime when I, you know, I, I would have had to travel to, to see them to, to this kind of area. But uh, now that they, they really are plentiful and, uh, and everywhere. Uh, livestock. I hate livestock. Or rather, they hate me. Um, let's hope that they uh, don't see me and uh, leave me alone. Um, I'll just film the scene for you. So, um, this is the side of the hill which you can sometimes get eye level shots um, of the kites. Uh, and then you've got um, another sort of peak of the hill or tip of the hill to, to the right hand side. So, I'm going to be walking alongside um, of this path. Pan across motorway as I said earlier on I'm panning left now starting to look towards towards London and in towards the midday sun you can make out the um, let's try and get it in focus the uh, the cliffs there that's the start of the cut through on the M40 going up what I think is effectively known as Stoke and Church Hill um, but looking at the other side of the hill again Great place to look for them, great place to, to camp out. They, they are literally absolutely everywhere around here and the surrounding um, uh, towns um, uh, and countryside. You shouldn't have too much, too much uh, difficulty finding any. 
might not be able to make this out on camera but I could already see two to three red kites circling the field where I'm about to uh, to get myself set up so fingers crossed we'll get some uh, some lovely shots all right so just just before I set up uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity actually to to say a huge thank you to everyone who's um, viewed and uh, liked and subscribed my uh, my first YouTube video. Um, I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Uh, I'm so, so grateful. Um, I wasn't expecting um, it to do uh, quite as well as it was, uh, or, or as it had. Um, I think, I mean, I uploaded it and I thought to myself, if, if I had 500 views after a month, 30 days, I, I'd be pretty happy. And I was kind of hoping for about maybe five subscribers as a result of the, of the first video. Um, it's been, I think, uh, just, over, just over a week, a week and a day since uh, it was released and uh, I think I'm on about 1,800 views and um, north of 100 likes and uh, north of 75 subscribers or, or something like that and um, if, I just want to say a huge thanks to anyone who's taken the trouble to, to, to view or leave a like and, uh, and the comments as well, they've all been absolutely lovely, so, so encouraging, um, I, I, I can't thank you all enough so uh, a huge thanks. Um, I, w I would like to also just um, uh, give a special shout out to a chap called Richard Burkett who um, did uh, put a put a link and a post out on his uh, Instagram stories. And Richard, if you don't know, he's quite an established um, uh, wildlife photographer and YouTuber. So Richard, thank you very much. I'm sure that did uh, did make a difference. And for those of you watching, um, Richard is actually one of my uh, featured channels on my um, on my channel homepage. Um, so after this video, please do have a scroll and uh, uh, if you don't know his channel already. Uh, check him out and uh, watch some of his videos because they're, they're well worth a watch. I've certainly learned a lot from, from watching them myself. Right, so let me talk you through my settings for the day. Um, it's a bright day, so I'm going to start off with 1,200 of a second uh, shutter speed. Um, I'm going to, actually because it's a bright day, stop this down to f7.1 just off the, uh, the minimum aperture because I think that will make the shot ever so slightly sharper. I've got the light, so why not use it? Auto ISO. And I, my go-to at the moment is, you'll notice I'm using my uh, quick set button to expose the, um, or overexpose the, the image for shooting into the sky. I'm going to presume that one stop over is going to do me as a, as a good starting point and I can change that as the light starts to, uh, to change. So yeah, um, all set up really. So I did want to say, if you want to do this but don't have a, a big 600mm lens or equivalent, don't let it put you off. This is a 70-300mm to lens for example, um, and that's how I started. In fact, I'll put a shot up to my very first uh, decent red kite shot, which was shot here with this very lens and the camera that I'm using now, the, the vlogging camera. So when you pair that with a uh, crop sensor DSLR, you will get um, in the region of, uh, I think it's 480 millimeters, just shy of 500 millimeters. Um, and so you can still get some uh, some great shots with that, um, as hopefully you'll see on screen. So don't let the um, lack of of big equipment um, put you off. Okay, so the sun is right in my eye, fortunately, so excuse the squinting. So I've had one fly bypass so far, pretty much over here. I've got some shots, but uh, not quite uh, not quite what I was hoping for, a little bit underexposed, so I've, I've bumped up the um, exposure compensation. Um, if I don't get another fly pass today, I'm gonna put some shots up now of some uh, that I got uh, last year when I was here at the same place uh, where um, I was actually having a, a birthday picnic here actually, just um, outdoors to get some sun. I brought the camera with me and um, uh, some kites gave me a, a, a flyby directly overhead uh, looking straight down at me, which I think is quite quite comical. So um, you should see those appearing on the screen uh, screen shortly. It just goes to show what, uh, what you can do uh, in terms of getting alternative um, angles. I mean, for those particular shots, um, I ended up lying on my back and shooting directly into the sky. So you'll notice that I'm now wearing a hat and gloves where I wasn't before. To be honest with you, laziness really, and a combination of the fact that it's um, quite a popular spot and people can get pretty freaked out if I'm in full-on camo. Also that and the fact that I knew that the kites are, are reasonably used to people. I didn't think um, uh, wearing uh, or covering my face and hands would make too much of a difference. Although, to be honest with you, I mean, really I should have done. Um, it's almost a must really. So uh, a halfway house is camo gloves and uh, a beanie. Um, and that way hopefully they don't look too scary for, uh, for, the, um, for the other passers-by with their, with their dogs. All 
Right, almost, we're guaranteed. Action starter. Pour yourself a cup of tea. And just while you're in the middle of making it, something will happen. I used to go fishing as a boy, and that used to happen a lot. Every single time I was pouring, it would seem every single time I was pouring a cup of tea, I'd get a run on a pike would take, uh, or my float would go in the water um, for, for other course fishing, or my ledger would um, uh, would swing. Just the job. I wouldn't normally expect to have to use a teleconverter out here, uh, but for whatever reason today, uh, they're not uh, getting as close as they, uh, they usually do. Um, so I have a, a 1.4 Canon Extender Mark III. Um, I'm really struggling with the Sigma, to be honest with you, and, and the Extender. They're not gelling well at all. Um, if anyone does have an experience of that Extender and the Sigma, do let me know uh, what your thoughts of it are, or indeed, if there is a, a better one, if you've got the Sigma one, for example, does that perform any better with the... Um, the Sigma lens, I just find that the focusing is horrendously slow, horrendously slow, uh, and unless I'm dealing with a, a static subject, um, I'm effectively just um, pretty much got no chance. But that said, you know, I've got some shots in the bag already. Uh, I've got some record shots from previous uh, attempts here that I can, I can show you. So uh, I'm going to give it a go and uh, see what happens. Okay, so after everything I've just said about that teleconverter, um, I've just got a couple of really nice um, uh, shots uh, with it, and I didn't seem to have too much problems, uh, too, or too many problems uh, uh, focusing. Uh, let me just uh, show you uh, uh, what I've got. So hopefully you can see. No, you can't. Yeah, I think you're just about going to be able to see if I move backwards. Um, I've zoomed in a little bit there, but some quite nice um, shots of a pair of uh, pair of kites. Um, Schoolboy era. I have blown out the whites. I forgot to um, dial down my um, exposure compensation when uh, when they were lit by the sun on their underbellies. But never mind. Um, I think I can rescue it, and uh, if they come out any good, I'll pop uh, I'll pop them on screen for you. Right, so I've just dropped my shutter speed to 1 12 of a second because the light has ever so slightly faded. Um, I've also, just to avoid me um, blowing out any more highlights, I'm going to adjust my uh, exposure compensation down a little bit. So it's now one stop and a third. Um, it's quite a hazy day still. So the shots that I'm getting from distance, especially with the teleconverter, are not coming out quite as... Uh, sharp as I'd like. I'm kind of hoping that they might uh, come out okay in Lightroom dehazed. Might not be able to see that on camera, but he's definitely spotted me eye to eye with a red kite. Uh, settings 1250th of a second, teleconverter on F9, uh, overexposed by a one stop and a third. Um, ends up being at ISO 1250. Um, so I'll have to lift the shadows, but yep, uh, it doesn't look too bad actually. I'll take that back about that teleconverter. <laughs> um, it's not wildlife photography, um, but I've just watched a plane quite literally do a loop the loop <laughs> in front of me. Um, it's still out there now. I'm going to try and film it. I don't know if I'm going to be successful or if he's on his way. Um, it looks like he's uh, uh, on his way, but he might be turning. I'll, I'll see what I can find. Well, um, yeah, I did manage to get it, um, albeit in slow motion. That was what my camera was set to. Uh, by default. Um, I've not really ever sped up slow motion footage before to regular speed, but well, I guess you can do that. I'll try it. Um, if not, you've got a slow-mo clip. Um, but anyway, a bit of fun there. Something different for a change. I have noticed something which is a bit concerning. Um, this is probably where my lack of expertise shows, really. Um, there's a red kite uh, I've, I've taken a few pictures of it before, and I noticed it before, flying out there. One of, one of I mean, oh, there must be, I don't know, 15, 20 of them out there at the moment. Um, but one of them in particular, 
um, looks pretty pretty ragged. It looks like he's in pretty poor shape. I'll try and show you on the back of the camera. Um, I don't know if this is going to um, show or not. It's about banging direct sunlight. Probably won't do. I'll put up a picture on the screen. Um, this, this this kite here is the only one that looks like that, that, that raggedy. Um, and I don't know why or what's causing that. Uh, if you do, then then please do let me know. I'd be quite keen or quite curious. I'm I'm presuming um, it's uh, it's unwell uh, or has some kind of uh, disease. I'm not 100 sure. Uh, either that or I mean it looks I mean it looks like it's been in a scrap or you know it's escape the clutches of a fox or a cat or something i mean it's flying around fine it's still up in the air it's still soaring it, it just looks like it's in a right old state that's all um but yeah if you know um let me know by all means okay so um further to loop the loop man um, who hasn't come back since um i've just seen a biplane uh, i've got a, a, a picture um quite far out though but um interesting to see you don't see many of them around um does look pretty old, I have to say. I particularly enjoy the wheels underneath it. They, they remind me of um, of gigantic pram wheels. You'll see it. Uh, you'll, you'll you'll know what I mean when you uh, when you see it on screen. Right, third try and trying to film this. So um, well, I'm very pleased with that. Um, One twelve fiftieth of a second f nine because of the teleconverter. Air exposed by a stop and two thirds at ISO 2500. Uh, it's almost a full frame shot, and if you zoom uh, right in and have a look at the eyes, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. That's not bad at all, is it? Really, really pleased with that. Not sure if you can see that. Um, that's zoomed in, but a very nice shot, nevertheless, um, of a red kite if I zoom out. Um, Quite a lot of detail there. I think the exposure is good. I might have to lift. Yeah, I mean more or less. You, they're in the shadows one minute. They're not the other. Depending on which way they uh, they turn, you, you you can't you can't adjust for everything on the fly. At least I can't. I'm pretty good with. I'm pretty happy with how I've uh, dialed that in. So um, I think I did blow out the highlights on its head slightly, um, ever so slightly blinking highlights. But I don't think it's going to affect the image at all on the bright white head. So. Um, uh, 1 12th 50 for a second f9 due to the teleconverter and again uh, overexposed by a stop and two thirds iso is coming out at 3200 so yeah uh pretty happy with that one uh, overall um with the r6 i've noticed that even when the highlights are showing as blown on the um back of the screen in lightroom i'm not 100 percent sure they're completely blown out i think there might still be some uh uh, chance of recovery there but let's have a look I mean it's right on the top of its forehead there I don't think it's going to detract from the image really at all especially if I zoom out well I've had quite the aerial display today red kites loop the loop man a biplane that looks like it's from World War One era or something um, and a micro light aircraft I do believe uh, rather him than me, it does look a little bit too precarious up there on your own. Yeah, brave man, he, I'd say. Okay, everyone, it's um, it's four o'clock, so I reckon I've got about I don't know, at the most 45 minutes um, of light left. Um, it's absolutely freezing up here. Um, I've gone through an entire one and a half liters flask of coffee. Well, I'm going to be buzzing. <laughs> I have to wash it down with a beer later on to help me get to sleep probably um, so I'm going to start to pack up um, I think uh, I'll call it a day as far as um, this vlog is concerned but I wanted to just say um, thanks very much for, for watching sorry the sun's in my eyes there um, and then once again as I said earlier on um, for anyone that did also watch my, my previous um, uh, or my first uh, YouTube video on, on, on Barn Owls and Hen Harriers if you liked it, watched it, uh, and commented, um, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I I really don't know what to say. I, I've been overwhelmed by um, how how positive and 
uh, kind everyone has been. Uh, well, I guess uh, if it's not too cheeky, I'll ask uh, the same as I did uh, last time, which is uh, if you enjoyed uh, watching this, um, you found it entertaining, or if you did learn something, then um, please uh, please do give me a like. Uh, I uh, very much um, very much appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you uh, in the next video. Uh, thanks very much, and take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.